I'm Andy Otto. Our reading from St. Paul's letter to the Romans is a kind of Beatitudes. Beatitude means blessed. Jesus' original Beatitudes taught us a way of life, how to live a blessed and happy life. And Paul is taking the spirit of the Beatitudes and drawing it out. Did you notice all the verbs? Love, anticipate, be fervent, rejoice, endure, persevere, contribute, bless, weep. It is a call to action, to ways we can fulfill the greatest commandment of loving God and neighbor. One way to learn this is to, as Paul writes, associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. In other words, be humble and associate with those who live humble lives. I'll never forget years ago when I spent some weeks in a very poor part of Kingston, Jamaica. The people I met lived in sometimes atrocious conditions, yet there was a twinkle in their eyes, a rejoicing at church Sunday mornings, a fervency of faith, a care for their children and the elderly, and often a kind word, bless, they would say to you. They were living out those verbs Paul mentioned, and they were grateful for what they had. Despite their poverty, they seemed to have joyful spirits. Those who go to places like this may come with their own self-righteous wisdom, but they come away humbled. I certainly was. The truth is, we all have limited worldviews. That should humble us. And the only way to expand it is to listen to one another's unique lived experiences. We know how much our world needs humility. Each of us could do with a bit more humility. A lack of it often drives us to resentment and hubris, and at its worst, violence. But Paul states clearly the Christian way of life. Don't fight evil with evil. Dom held their camera, says just as much, calling for nonviolence. I once taught a high school moral theology class and asked students if they thought peace and nonviolence was possible. Most of them said no. Most of them felt that some violence was necessary to keep peace. I'll admit that I too struggle with this question. I don't know. Sometimes it's easy to think of it as a pipe dream. But what if it was the solution? What if we replaced our arms with love, our revenge with reconciliation, our resentment with blessing? What if we refused the lie of violence and instead sought transformation through love? Wasn't that the path not only of Jesus, but of people like Dr. King and Gandhi? Yet there were, and are, plenty who felt like their dreams were fantasy. Polls have shown that there is growing confidence in the military and declining confidence in the church. Surveys have found that most people do feel war is sometimes necessary. Perhaps it's a so-called necessary evil. Perhaps it's an unfortunate reality to this world. But Jesus and Paul are not speaking of this world. They're speaking of a reality where God reigns. It's a kingdom that we do see glimpses of and that we help build when we practice nonviolence. But it's a kingdom that is also not yet. But we shouldn't stop building it. Religion is often a justification for violence, but shouldn't it be a justification for peace? Paul has an interesting line in this passage. He says, Do not look for revenge, but leave room for the wrath of God. I struggle with that because I don't believe in a wrathful God. I believe that's more our human interpretation of the natural consequences of sin. But what I hear Paul saying is, leave the anger to God. If anything, God's anger is probably more gentle than ours. Instead, feed your enemy. Give him something to drink. It's a radical way of life. But if we call ourselves Christians, 
That is what we're always going to try to do.